Jordan Galore. I don't know what they were running around with on week two, but at the very least here in week three, they have not got that Bangalore. Um, so they've kind of gone back to what seems to be the most popular composition in the Valkyrie, Seer, and Watson comp. Most teams running that. So a little bit of a change up maybe in mentality for EXO. Um, I don't know if you remember what they were playing last week, do you know? Um, they switched it up, so I'd have to, I don't know, maybe we could throw that one over to our, our, uh, our lovely uh, stats person, Rice, and she can give us an update on that mm -hmm. at some point. Um, because in the first week, they were playing Bangalore, right? Uh, and then yep. they did switch it up in the second week. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm just struggling to remember what that was too. There's a lot of teams in these lobbies, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, now, as you said, um, they are with a, a little bit more of the, the meta comp there running the Valkyrie, the Seer, and the Watson currently, as you can see, um, you know, a, a lot of other teams are as well. Oh, okay. We've got two teams down here in Shipfall. Um, ours, as our observers are drawing our attention to right here, there's, uh, we've got uh, Stinky B. And then it's actually uh, 2MK1 pad team op who are sort of taking the northern buildings um, where the the beacon is. Um, they're running up there at the moment. Mm. So, oof. And look, the zone's actually not too far away from them. So if they play this right, there could be a lot of people running into them um, rather than away. Energy All right, well, kicking off game number three. Like, we once again have a bit of a different zone than what we have seen in the first couple. Maybe a little bit closer to what we saw in game one, but a little bit more south, encompassing quite a large portion of uh, of the Jurassic Park, which was eventually pulled out of game, uh, game one zone. So, very similar rotation, uh, particularly for the teams coming down from the north, but for the, the southern-facing teams, probably a little bit more time to work with. Stinky B, certainly going to be taking advantage of that, going for a little bit more loot. They do even have a trident down there if they want to use it, but I think for rotation this short, they, they probably won't even need to bother with that. GQ, IMC Armory playing that out at the moment. They uh, they won't have too far to go to themselves. You can see a couple of teams next to them. Gravity Cannon being used by... Actually, no, it was a Valkol by the Boogie Boarders. Um, and they're just going straight into Barometer. They'll be second in, actually. So they get second pick. It's Daywa who has taken the northernmost building, which I think is uh, generally the, the place to be. Uh, we've seen it not work out for teams in the past, but this zone isn't going as far south in Barometer. So... Um, we, we're not going to see one of those uh, sort of very unexpected last minute shifts. Um, it could sort of go up towards more northerly. Where, like where you can see north side esports right now, I guess there's a chance it does pull up there. But um, Dewa, that's that's kind of the safe bet, right? That's a, that's a safe pair of hands sitting there right in the middle um, where they are in the northernmost barometer building. Um, so I like that as the... Uh, the team who owns that POI, um, they've they've decided to play there. Golden Sage need to be a little bit careful with their positioning here, I feel. And they are very wary of that, very cognizant of that. The Valkol is going to get them out, of, <laughs> out, of, out to safety just in time. Moist Esports going to be following suit, although they were in the building, so a little bit of a safer exit for them uh, it looks like teams are expecting this one to continue to head south Ooh. and west a little bit toward barometer because that's where most of those rotations are going yeah see a u-turn there from moist esports um they could have kept going and actually made it to like the you know the, the tall barometer building and manuel trying to force the issue over here though that's down the south of barometer where there's no is it even even there at the moment they'll take out gq but can they hold up against stinky b is they're putting down the Seer ult and pushing it already. B. Mm, looking for some shots onto that Valk. They're not connecting too many with the longbow right there. But it looks like Chambers will go down eventually to the Vault. Because he's picked that one up. And so Stinky B. You find their mark eventually. The chase is still on. How so desperate. easy is it going to be able to catch? So desperate for those kills. Wasn't even waiting for the longbow yeah. recoil to reset. He was spamming out the shot. Oh, no. That one of them would hit. Emmanuel eventually uh, is going to go down all three members, as you can see there. Uh, mm. A bit of help from the north. 
Northside Esports, funnily enough. So now that they've uh, cleaned up the full squad, Stinky B go back to, to resupply off those death boxes. Uh, and look, they've got a lot of space themselves, but that's not a surprise because they're not in the ring. Um, but they, they will be able to fall into barometer, perhaps, you know, maybe even play the tunnels underneath. No one's um, in that sort of central barometer position right now. Pretty relaxed, actually, so far down toward Barometer. I mean, that one little engagement is the only one we're going to get by the looks of things. Good spread of uh, of players. Golden Sage, Dewa, Boogie Borders, all set up there on toward the northern side of Barometer. Take a look at SRY, who are rotating down from very far north. Still actually quite a few teams around there. I mean, Stormcatcher could actually be uh, a point of interest on the map that does get a little bit congested if Chicken Sandwich opts to remain here, which I think they're going to want to do. They're probably just waiting for this zone to come in and they can scan that beacon again. Exactly. Yep. And get the extra info and then rotate. But if they wait, where does Dugu play end up? Where does SRY end up? Because it looks like both of those teams are also looking to go towards Stormcatcher. Here's a great shot of it. It is. They all want to rotate like, into the same spot. I mean, it's it's an interesting spot to play from, though, right? Because Stormcatcher, obviously, it's it's so high up that you actually get a good vantage point around the area. So they should know that these other yep. teams are coming. They've obviously taken some charge rifle shots there. So they um, that has given them some awareness of where these other teams are. As you say, uh, this beacon is within the zone. So that's an easy scan for them um, for the next, uh, the next zone. Uh, and on top of that, they've also got... The, uh, the charging, sorry, the, uh, the crafting station there as well. Um, so, you know, a couple of options there uh, for them over here in Stormcatcher. And I think this is just going to give them uh, more info than a lot of other teams have to make their next rotation. Um, probably just save that Valkult for the perfect spot. All right, there where is right that next zone going to go? Oh, it's, it's going even further away from them. So, I think that's about as hard as it's really going to get for a rotation. You know, if I'm in the position of Chicken Sandwich here, I'm probably looking to get into Jurassic Park somewhere. And then Skyward Dive up and over into Barometer, but... Yeah, you know what the problem here is, though, Elfish? Is that this is, like, the predicted zone pool, right? So, something we saw last week, which which uh, caused a lot of trouble for these good teams that are good at taking positions, they're good at reading zones, um, is that we had just crazy zone pools that really, yeah. uh, really messed with them. They've actually... They might actually be pulling on top of Dugu play here. They they realize, they recognize, and this is, you know, they're not just playing zone here. They've, they've decided to switch it up and play a little bit of edge, um, respecting the position that they're in, and they're going to come back in off the Dugu play. I like the flexibility of this by Chicken Sandwich. Let's see if they can catch up with them. Uh, but while we're waiting for that to happen, as I said, um, this is uh, an expected zone, and that means um, that a lot of the positions that they might be hoping to Valkult into are going to be taken. Um, there's not going to be last minute rotation, so this is, a, I think, a really smart play by them to start fighting. Uh, it's not a bad choice at all, but if they can catch up to Dugu play is going to be the first question. Strafing Flame down to no shields. We'll have to pop a bat. That's going to cost a bit of time, and Dugu play in the meanwhile get a bit of respite. Able to pop a couple of shields of their own. The chase is still on. And Chicken Sandwich are wrapping further to the west than I think Dugu play expected. Oh, Moonlight, no. Tears, has been caught. Oh my god as well, down to just the one. Remember, this is down back toward Barometer. Uh, back to that last fight. Chicken Sandwich have found the opener. And once you find that opener and, you know, the, the, your opponents are starting to cross over a river over open terrain like that, uh, that's when you start to expect things are going to go quite comfortably here for Chicken Sandwich. Another one for Player K as he finishes off. I kill only Noob. And you've even got a little bit of vision there of them keeping an eye on their backs, even though nothing is coming. Good to see that oh. being uh, good, being done. I've got to be honest, that was that was complete disconnect there by Dugu Play. Moonlight Tears stopped and tried to, um, you know, take a look at all three members of Chicken Sandwich. Essentially, while the other two members kept going, he had the Castle Wall available. Didn't use that to try and fortify a different position or even the uh, the movement ability that that gives you. 
um, to try and get out of there, and that's why he got caught off. And then, obviously, from that point on, it's just a, a straight-up 2v3, uh, and there was really no chance. So, Bususei may get a chance to go back for those banners and try and res, uh, but certainly the team not on the same page there, and Chicken Sandwich making the best of this choice of theirs to play uh, a little more aggressively uh, and late rotating into the circle in this game three. Team up somehow haven't gotten themselves into a fight just yet. That is fairly uncharacteristic from what we've seen out of the first two games. There are quite a few teams around this area though. So we may see it eventuate pretty shortly. You've got good riddance in the building on top. And MDY in the building next to them. Doesn't really look like Team Up are super eager to get aggressive though. And I guess they're not in a bad spot positionally in terms of the zone. So they can actually just try to play for positioning right now. Going to send themselves a, a drone out. Have a look. And scan the next beacon. Yeah, right. it's, it's, not a, it's not a bad spot to play from, right? Because uh, the zone's not going to end there. So, But it is a good spot for teams to post up in the interim. So mm -hmm. if they know that, that means they can, you know, there's going to be rotations happening around them uh, and they can try and take advantage of that and get into those fights where they do like to pick up a lot of their points. Well, chicken sandwich. Certainly not shying away from the fights today typically have been doing them a little bit later on in the uh in the game but as we've already talked about this one maybe not going to be as easy for them to play positionally so they're just going to try to play for some kills take some early fights this time they've gotten on top of exo and done a fairly sizable chunk to a couple of those members but it's not really a committed fight dexter up on the high ground he spotted the player actually wrapping inside of the the it's the antenna i don't even know what you would call that what's the upside down dome bit <laughs> the circle. What's what's the what's the inside? I don't know what you call it. So basically, there was a player down there. He spotted them, but he couldn't stay up on the high ground to, to take any shots because he was getting covered off by someone else. So yeah, um, pretty good team play from Chicken Sandwich. Yeah, I don't know if that's exactly what it is, but let's go with that. It gives people a good idea of at least what I'm talking about. It's like uh, an amphitheater, but like the, the whole way around, the whole thing. Rather, rather than just like one piece of it. Of the full theater, I don't know. Anyway. The funnel. I'm um, going to call it the funnel, I think. The that's funnel. What, that's yeah, that's not is. bad. That's not bad. Okay. Uh, Truth, Truth Esports also uh, playing a little bit edge. I, I feel like we've kind of seen this in a couple of series so far here in Apex South where, like, the first game will be... Uh, there's a lot of respect, a lot of people playing really conservatively, and then as the maps kind of get towards game two or game three, uh, whether it's, like, Stormpoint or World's Edge, um, people sort of play it, like... I don't know whether it's like where the zones are pulling or, or what, but they they start looking for more fights as as these maps uh, as we get deeper into the series. Um, either way, um, Exo Clan haven't fully finished off that fight with Chicken Sandwich yet. Both of them still just poking and prodding, probably waiting for that first down. Um, but here we go, some ults are starting to get committed now. They're getting very close to each other. Yes, indeed. Dexter just gets collapsed upon by strafing flame. Timing not working out there for him at all. And it's a very good start to things. But Monic Esports, Lahim, going to go down straight away as well. So, Ixi and Belkin now going to have to try and touch this one out as a duo. L-Star and the Vault. I don't know. That's exactly what Belkin would like to be running around with. And unfortunately, it's going to come down to now just a big Z. He's going to drop that alternator pylon. But not really going to be able to take much of the value from it. As he basically just tries to book it. Truth, they're going to be hot on his heels. Though Zone is pushing out their back. We'll jump back over to the Exo fight. This started poorly for them. And it is just Killapod that's left alive. He's trying to get out of no. dodge. But he is chased down by Player K. Oh, this is a yeah, terrible so fight for both teams, though. Zone's pulling in Elfish. Exo do get finished off. But we're still here wondering if Chicken Sandwich are even going to make it out of this. They act they may have to leave Panna behind. You can see they're not even going to grab his banner. Strafing Flame, Player K, they're just booking it. It's like I'm, I'm honestly surprised they managed to get out with two players, let alone one. And they're just going to hide like right on the edge of the zone outside uh, the mountains here. But Truth are going to be within striking distance. If they get a whiff of this, honestly, Truth are probably going to... Um, may try and, and, and grab them as they go through. They decide to go even further south, so they're probably going to be safe. 
Um, and we'll go over to Day One now, who of course uh, have been sitting in this, uh, sitting pretty in this position for the a very long time. As we see, uh, the zone continue to pull on top of them. Um, they continue to be very happy about uh, their position in this third game. It looks like a lot of teams really read this zone quite well. Uh, we did see one of these in week one as well. Very, very similar finish. And I'm not half minding the position that Good Riddance have got themselves into. Hold that thought though. Stinky B, they're about to get knocked out here as well. Don Cat was not long for this world. 2MK, one pad. Do not lose a player. Going to be able to get some armor swaps through here as well, hopefully. Because there is a team hot on their heels. And that is MDY, who come back with a bit of a vengeance, but doesn't really go very well for them at all. And they are now down to just QQ. So while they were the aggressors, MDY, that has been the team to come off second best. Maybe not a smart decision for them. I'll have to live with the consequences there. At least one of their members will. Still lobbing in some grenades from the side. Let's see if any of those actually uh, land on Team Op. Uh, other teams talking about landing. 505 have landed directly in the middle of the circle. And they're going to be playing the underside of one of these passages. Tend to be a good spot as the uh, you know you get later on in the game. You don't have as many angles to worry about. 505, I feel like they have been reasonably good at finding positions in the uh, the last couple of weeks. We haven't seen them win out in a lot of, like, important fights, though. Um, I, you know, reminding me of, like, Buriram a little bit, though I, I probably would put Buriram a rung above them as far as, uh, you know, 3v3 capacity goes. Chicken sandwich, unfortunately, as you can see. Still trying to get by without Panna, but look for them at the moment. They've taken over space in the barrow here. And managed to uh, leave G Pi without his, his second or third teammates. Over there. Well, this roof and the roof the chicken sandwich are shooting at are actually going to be kind of the uh, the important positions in this next zone. You control a lot of territory, get a lot of info from those high ground positions. Anyone down in the water? doesn't really get to dictate their fight. They really only get to answer when someone decides to peek them. Uh, and that can never really be a good feeling because you don't really feel like you're in control of the game that you're playing. You have to play reactively rather than proactively. But it, to be fair, it is also possible to sort of play that low ground, kind of keep your head down, keep hidden, conserve those resources. Circle shifting, again, a little bit more central does mean that, that that big building with the, the good roof is kind of not the, the ultimate god spot because inevitably teams in that building and on top of it are actually going to have to move. It's actually the, the building the boogie mortars are on top of that does end up being inside the zone. So that might be the better position, all things considered. And there's no way to predict that, right? I mean, we saw we saw a zone in N1, uh, in, sorry, in week one end where Daywa were holding up. Um, so, you know, that's just that's just how it is. Sometimes uh, Boogie Boarders, they get the pull this time. And with the setup here on Watson, it's probably going to net them quite a few kills as well. Truth looking for some of those themselves on that northern building as people start to make their way out. There's that Barrow that's just so hard to hide inside. Uh, and Natsuru Sama taking pot shots in there. Unfortunately, Chicken Sandwich, they can run, but they can't hide from the sniper of this man. Nitsurusama very nearly does bite off a little more than he could chew there, but gets away okay. Got plenty of time to heal back on up. And what is Fruit going to do on this rotate? Looks like they're just going to send it straight down into the water. Generally, it does end up being a bit of a safer position once you're down there. But obviously, once you're down, you have to come back up. And they can play that position for now. They're also going to have to deal with SRY, who was down on the, the low ground as well. On the other side of this uh, setup, underneath the bridge, and to the left here. Mr. Sama wants to carve out his territory, and yeah, he just gets a bit greedy for that box, doesn't he? Knowing that SRY is there. Punished for it a little bit. 
Oh, one by the one by one, these teams are going down, and Truth are the only ones left with a Newcastle in the lobby. So potentially they can use that um, for some extra cover. That said, they've got some some pretty uh, hefty hefty walls uh, saving them at the moment, as you can see. They don't have to worry about creating their own too much mm. just yet. But as this zone pushes in, you better believe they will. Daywa have somehow managed to get right in the middle of things. Will that help or hinder them? Only time will tell. EMP going out as we speak is going to connect probably onto everyone in the lobby. Circle's starting to get quite small now. Lots of cover still to work with. Good shot oh. <laughs> from Yanlis. He's able to upgrade his armor to red with that spray. Big stuff there. Okay, we've got six teams left as our final lobby is about, our final ring is about to start closing. 505, they've got to worry about boogie borders on top of them. SR wire on the top here with Truth, and they're about to get pushed. Oh, well, I don't know if this push is going too well. Mosu is down to a one shot. That zone's going to be on his back in just a second, but Truth is holding strong. SRY taken down. Mosu maybe is just going to be reservable in the Newcastle passive as well, helping out. Get him back into the safety. I think if he couldn't move there, yep. maybe he yep. doesn't get rezzed. Because the zone's yep. going to be pushing at his back. Being out of manipulate that position, very important here. Okay, five. Now we've still got Boogie Borders versus 505 down the bottom. Daywa trying to hold on strong in the middle. And Truth coming off the back of that are going to be in a tough spot. I really feel like Boogie Borders might have prime position on this, assuming they can win that 3v3 down the bottom. Oh, not really getting to see too much of that, but I'm not seeing it pop up too much in the kill fleet either. Truth is down. They were united. Three strong. Boogie Borders the same. So it's 3v3 v3. There's nine members still left in this game. Feels like it could still be anybody's to take. 505. Maybe the team that is a little bit worse for wear and now also getting pushed out of the tunnel that they were holding in. Boogie Borders did a lot of damage to them before they moved. And the zone is very much at their backs. And oh not been given the opportunity to heal. Well, they've, they've managed to push 5v5 into Daywa, which is, of course, fantastic from them. And they're just getting crunched by all of these fences. And now they're going to go in for the final 3v3. Oh, dear. It's a gauntlet. It's a gauntlet. Both teams have to drop down off of the high ground into what is essentially a valley. A gauntlet in between the two. Daywa United goes second. But do they win the round? Daywa United, just a duo still. But a healthy enough looking duo. There's an alternator pylon in there as well, kind of healing everybody up. And it's all a bit messy. But it's Daywa United that will go back to back. And they jump off that high ground just half a second later than Boogie Borders. And I think that's really the difference. They get those free shots in, capitalize on that, and obviously win the game. Man, but it wasn't even, it wasn't even just that last bit that was so important.